for the company in China. Joining us now is Tesla investor, former company board member, Steve Wesley. Steve, it's great to see you today. As Good it to stands see you. now, 20% of Tesla's uh, shares are trading short. Do you think that this $500 uh, share price is unsustainable? Well, look, only time will tell. But I have a hunch Tesla is going to continue to do well. Here's why. First, they're growing at 20% a year while well, most uh, auto companies are shrinking. Second, the firm has 18.9% uh, gross margins, higher than most other auto companies in the world. Third, moving international very quickly in Europe, already the number one selling car, gas or electric, in the Netherlands, Norway, Switzerland, number three in the UK. They've moved into China very quickly. They're expanding the product line. If Tesla's had cylinders, you'd have to say they're hitting on an awful lot of them. But there's a bigger picture here, and it was said by Herbert Dees, the head of Volkswagen, and he said, look, all the others are being valued as auto companies. Tesla's being valued as a technology company. They're on track to do 30 billion this year, 3X multiple. If it's a tech company, that's a bargain. All right, so a part of the drive definitely is this performance in China and the opening of the Shanghai factory. And of course, we all saw Elon Musk's jubilation there. Is the dancing premature when you consider the fact that China has something in the neighborhood of 400 plus vehicle manufacturers coming online? <laughs> I don't think so. And here's why. First, China is the biggest auto market in the world. There's a huge demand there. Second, China has extremely acute pollution problems. I believe the demand for electric vehicles uh, is going to be huge. Don't forget, the Tesla Model S, which is the primary vehicle they're selling there, has a miles per gallon equivalent of 123 miles per gallon. What's not to like about that? But on top of all of that, I've spent a lot of time in China, and we've done business there, is that the Chinese consumer has traditionally, historically, been very brand conscious. They love apples. They love uh, the high-end brand names. And Tesla, like it or not, is the dominant brand in the electric car uh, business. I think they're going to sell very well there. I think it's going to be the must-have uh, vehicle in the country for those who can afford it. Yeah, well, to the point you'd made earlier, uh, Steve, about being a technology company, what are your expectations when it comes to autonomous driving? The idea of robot taxi fleets available and Tesla being the leader. I, you know, it's funny, I hear different things about their data capture because they do have so much data available given the cars that are on the road. But it's unclear to me how much of it they're actually keeping to help AI and to help improve and continue to sort of uh, fuel what would be autonomous. Look, you've put your finger on the key issue of the age. One, part of the reason so many auto companies may be in trouble is we're moving toward a world where more people are doing ride hailing. My kids, who are 18 and 20, don't need to buy a car. They're happy to do ride hailing. And the question is, how quickly does it become autonomous? Mr. Musk has done something some people say is rash. Uh, others say is brilliant. We'll see. But he's moved quickly to put cars with increased autonomous driving features on the road. I believe they have captured that data. Uh, it's ultimately, uh, in the auto industry, going to be about who has the most data will be able to produce the most, uh, the safest autonomous vehicles. By the way, with the cost of LiDAR coming down, I think you'll see autonomous vehicles on the road in the next four to five years, far sooner than anybody thought. And if Tesla ends up leading that race, $500 could look like a bargain. Um, four to five years, autonomous. You know, again, the value here, though, that the market is ascribing to the company just based on auto sales, you're a believer that it's going to be about a lot of other revenue sources, I would assume, autonomous being one of them, perhaps battery technology being another that justifies uh, this current market value of roughly, let's call it $90 billion. Well, again, it's all the things I said. They're simply put, growing faster than virtually any other uh, auto company in the world. They're going to more markets more quickly. They're now coming out with a full line of vehicles. Uh, we all love to laugh at the Cybertruck because it looks a little crazy, but they've already taken 250,000 orders. Some of that obviously is the power of the brand. But I just, I would step back a little bit, and this comes directly from what uh, Mr. Deason, the head of VW said, and I think it's a speech everybody should uh, read, but we're in an extraordinary age. 
where there are two issues that kind of linger above everything else, arise above everything else. One, people have concerns about global warming. Two, everything we deal with from our homes to our cars are becoming digitized. Tesla's put a vehicle on the street, 123 uh, miles per gallon equivalent range, uh, the most digitized car in the world, the first uh, car company to really realize people wanted more from a car. It may end up being the most powerful digital uh, mobile device in our life. We all think that's the uh, phone today, and it certainly is. In the future, will it become the car? If so, Tesla may have the pole position. Also, if we can put a plow on that cyber truck, it might be very useful in our driveways as well. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your perspective. Happy to be here. Let's get a news update now. Sue Herrera has that for us back at HQ. Sue. Good morning, David. Good morning, everyone. Here's what's happening at this hour. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, delivering a Friday sermon in Tehran.